What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pinson here with another episode of Run Your Race with my guy, AJ Richardson, who is not here again. He is getting another hefty fine. This is like the fifth episode that he's missed. Unacceptable. Nah, he, he, I think he's on vacation right now, so <laughs> he can have his time. But uh, people, we got a, another very, very, very special guest, a brother from another mother. My classmate going into Carolina, my boy, Justin Jackson. I appreciate you coming on with me, bro. And I am very excited about this pod. Yeah, very, man. It's been very, a long time coming, bro. Long time I'm coming. happy to be here. Long time coming. <laughs> Listen, Justin, I don't know if you know uh, how we do things here, but also we want to make sure our viewers know how we do things. We go from high school, we go to college, and then we get to the league, to wherever you are right now. And, we try to build all the way up. So that's where we come from. That's where Run Your Race started. We want to just wanted people to tell their story and how they got to where they are. So just show people have different races throughout the way and you can achieve whatever you want to achieve, no matter what, what you go through. And people, as uh, our viewers and you know yourself, just being in a basketball community, nobody has the same pathway to get to where they want to be. So, and you have a very interesting story in yourself. So. Um, first, let's start off. Justin, where are you from? Um, when did you start hooping and what do your parents do? All that stuff. And yeah. Let's talk about just the, the beginning of Justin Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, first, bro, what you're doing, bro, is uh, I think it's a pretty legit um, and dope concept. Appreciate I think it. a lot of people, uh, like you said, a lot of people don't really talk about kind of their uh, you know, what happened before they really got to a limelight. And mm -hmm. so I think this, this whole concept is super dope. Um, but me personally, man, so I grew up, I was born in, in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of moved around because of my, my dad's job, um, but mainly we're kind of settled in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, grew up uh, with, I got a little brother and two little sisters. Um, we did pretty much everything together, bro. Um, kind of went up once I got to high school. Um, we were actually homeschooled, which mm -hmm. I think is, uh, you know, most people would say is rare and, and weird or whatever you want to call Shout it. Shout out to the homeschoolers. You can still make it to the league. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 100%, man. 100%. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, we just uh, homeschooled all the way up through, through high school, bro. Um, all my siblings did. Um, mm -hmm. We kind of took some... They call them co-op classes, but my mom didn't teach us the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, once we got to high school, then we were pretty much, uh, we would go to classes with other high school um, homeschoolers. and Elaborate elaborate on that. Like, because I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about it. So elaborate how, what what's the typical day of a uh, homeschool day? Yeah, so it, it just depended. Um, so if it was, once I got to high school, um, you know, I would have classes like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. um, and have to have the work done. Then I would have some classes, maybe one day, Monday, Wednesdays that were just different. And then same thing, have the have the work done by the next the next class period. So it's really, honestly, it's like a a lower tier college experience. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what that was. And then basketball wise, we had a homeschool team mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we didn't have a home gym, so we would have to we practice at like a high school gym, but we would practice before school hours so we'd be in there like six in the morning working out and practicing mm. um like monday and wednesday so that was kind of my schedule then once once everything was done then we were just at home well that's homeschool for you i mean <laughs> i hope you are at home what so what are the because this is like i said it, this is a part of the interesting story in the path you had you have had to be at home, being homeschooled, you're not going to the traditional school. You're not talking to kids when you're younger. Like, what do you want to do? Stuff like that. Like, you're just around family. You know what I'm saying? So what are the, what were the challenges as far as like, I would say socially and as far as like, 
um, just exploring outside. I mean, I guess you explored a little bit because y'all were moving around a lot in different cities, but what were the challenges you think you would say for kids who are beginning to start homeschool or to look out for or trying to do the same thing you're doing that you would give or advice Mm -hmm. or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, probably the best thing that my family could have done was have us go to these other classes um, and also playing AAU through high oh, school. Facts, facts, um, facts, facts. Yeah. Like I think a lot of times whenever you kind of see, you know, the quote unquote homeschooler that, you know, maybe his social, you know, skills or ability to interact with other people isn't as great. I think a lot of times those are the people that kind of just stay at home and yeah. teach their kids throughout all the way through high school with mm-hmm. no sort of um, extracurricular activities or, you know, maybe they don't play sports or whatever, but there's just really no other interaction with other humans yeah. on a day-to-day basis. Other than your family. Um, yep. Yeah. So I think that was probably what my family did best was, I mean, we were, whether it was in church or whether it was, you know, through AAU or through these other classes that we did, like we interact with different people at all times. So mm-hmm. that, that helped a lot. For sure. For sure. That's dope, bro. When did you start hooping? Or, or did you know you were going to hoop this whole time? Because I, like I've talked about multiple times, I th- my parents thought I was going to play football. So I, was, I used to always throw the football. I used to run into the couch with the football like I was getting tackled. Some weird, weird I mean, shit. sophomore year in college, you were kind of built like a fullback. So, I mean, yeah. I could have. Yeah, we're going to leave that out. We're going to leave that out. Uh, no, I'm just playing. Yeah, did you know? Or it was dude, like I, a, I didn't, bro. Uh-huh. I was... I mean, I love basketball. So I started playing basketball when I was, like, we'll say organized basketball. I started playing, like, YMCA when I was, like, first grade. Okay. Um, but I was awful. Like, I was so bad. Really? Like, I was the kid that, like, I mean, it was, like, third or fourth grade. I was the kid that, like, if I got knocked down or something, I'd start crying. <laughs> or, like, like, I was just, like, not good at all. Um, but so for, weird. But I still loved you. it. That's, yeah. that's what's so they weird about it. Like, like, <laughs> I've known you for a long, long time now. Like, you falling and crying, I just don't see it at all. Bro, oh, it, it, it's weird. Like, I was, yeah, it was, it was rough. Um, like, my parents coached me. They tried their best, but I, there was just no, it was like, this guy just, he might not have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, because I loved it and because my parents, like, they did a great job of, like, working me out, finding what I needed to do to get better or whatever. Probably once I got to eighth grade, eighth grade was, like, when I got my first, uh, scholarship from a school and once I got to eighth grade it was like okay I could actually I could actually do something with it yeah um so I think kind of that going into high school I think was whenever I really got you know pretty serious with it got you. you started AAU when I mean I started AAU back when I was like third grade third grade okay yeah. okay that, yeah because that just that gives you more confidence too the better players you play exactly. the better players you play with stuff like that so you said you got your first offer in eighth grade. When, that's when you were like, okay, I can do something with this. Yeah, I, I was, I'll never forget it, bro. I was in a gym. It's, I think it's closed down now, but it was called Comerica USA in Houston. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, I want to say we were working out, me and maybe my little brother, we were working out. Um, and I got a phone call. Or no, I, somebody had told me to call. It was Texas A&M. Somebody had told me to call. Illegal. <laughs> somebody had told me to call. <laughs> I know, right? Now it doesn't matter. So No, it doesn't. Um, however it happened, whether they called me or I called them. Ah, uh, you already said it. Happened. Illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Texas A&M, there it is. man. God, my That's fault. That's all good. Um, oh, shit. Those coaches, who knows where they're at now? Yeah, right. Uh <laughs> But yeah, I got the phone call, bro, and it was, uh, I didn't really, like, it didn't really hit me too much. Like, I was like, okay, well, that's cool, Mm -hmm. but it was, I was, at that time, I mean, I was four years from- How tall were you? uh, I was probably six, four, something like that. Yeah. 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 So it- uh, Thought he was going to be a big. I was going to be a four (laughs) or five. Uh, Um- yeah, but that, it was it was dope. That was, that was always that's why honestly that's why I always kept A and M in my yeah like yeah. top five or whatever because sure. they were like the first one for sure. So you get the first offer. You're playing AAU for the Houston Hoops this whole time. 
Play for the Houston Hoop. Go ahead and talk about AU a little bit, bro. You had some dogs on your team. You had some dogs. Bro, and of we, course, as you get that text in your mouth, it took off. Yeah, yeah. It was um, so it was my maybe freshman year. Mm-hmm. When did you play for you were with when I was did you play CP. with Bryce with CP? I was like Was that our freshman year? Yeah, I was like four, 14. I'm yeah. about to say, like it's our yeah, yeah, so you played up too. Yeah, I played up. Yeah. So I was on uh, I was on a team, some people might not, but in Houston, they were like local legends. But I played with like LJ Rose, yep. J. Michael Reese, Rashid Suleiman. Listen, um, listen, tell you right now, do your research, kids. Those, some dogs back in the day. Bro, they were killers. Dog, I, didn't, I ain't going to say back in the day, that's disrespectful, but they were some dogs. <sighs> it was, yeah. So, so I didn't even play a ton yeah. that year. Um, Came off the bench probably like 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Um, so I did, I played that. And then the next year uh, was whenever we really started loading up on like guys who most people would probably know at this point. Um, whenever Justice came over, yep. Justice Winslow, Kelly Oubre. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, so we, I played with some, some pretty freaking good players. Really good players, uh, bro. Did you play with uh, Derek Griffin? Yeah, yeah, I did play with Derek. Yeah, bounce. And that was, yeah, that was like Crazy bounce. young, where he was like the number one tight end. And yeah, bro. In the country. Yes. Like he was, yes. yeah, there was, I, we got, we played with some real, yeah. real hoopers. Bro. Real hooper, bro. But listen, I've said this multiple times already. Our class, we had some dogs, man. Nice. We had some dogs. I mean, Bigs, guards, wings. Whatever you needed. Through, up through and through. We, we had some dogs. Um, Peace Jam. Mm. Didn't we play on Peace Jam? Yes. No, no, no. We, no, we, we didn't. Played Y'all LA. lost before. Yeah, yeah, we, we played in LA. I didn't know if you remembered that. Bro, look, okay, this is I don't is a know story. if you remembered that. This, okay, <laughs> hold on. Here we go. I didn't want to bring it up because I was like, go. did he remember that? Hold, hold on. Okay, so that, that was our freshman year. Yes, when we played in that LA. was our freshman year. And that was right after you were ranked number one in the yes, country. Yes, Right? And so obviously as a competitor, you're like, I didn't know you then, right? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. forget Theo, yes. Theophilus, right? Yes. Like, forget this. Wow, government. Huh? So, hey, one <laughs> Um. So, bro, we went into that game. I mean, I only finished with like eight points, mm-hmm. but we went into that game, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta prove yeah. that I need to be up there." Yeah, I didn't do much, so it really had no effect. But I have no idea what the score of that game. I don't, I don't know who won. I think we might have. Yeah, won. I might have ended up winning. I think we might have won. Um, but I didn't play that much that, that year either, bro. It was, but it was like in our like. In everybody's minds, and our parents' minds, all that, it was like if you play up and you're on the EYBL circuit, that's the most exposure. We learned you can get. more than we thought we did. 100%. Just playing up because we were humble. One. Facts. B, you saw the best of the best and you knew, like, oh, yeah. I got to get better if I'm going to play. If I want to be Because if I want to play against these guys, my game got to be elite. 100%. Because they were dogs. Yeah. So, oh, I knew what I was about to ask. So we talk about mixtapes here. What is the best Ball is Life hoop mixtape that you remember, that you think that you've seen? We got a lot of John Walls. We got a lot of Austin Rivers. Um, your cars didn't your mention car. a couple times. Uh, what you got? You see, you're in Texas, different part of. See, but I'm not even gonna go that far. Like it's somebody we know, like near and dear, bro. Who? Seventh. Seven Woods hoop mixtape when he was what thirteen. Very impressive. I mean, that was, that made me like, think that I wasn't. Yeah. We were like, we got to get up. We got to get a little bit more athletic. (laughs) We got, we got to get in Jonas. I need you. Yeah. If these kids are coming (laughs) in here and jumping like this, what are we doing? Yeah, bro. I think when I saw sevens, I was like. I agree. That's. I agree. But Akil's was my, Akil cars was my favorite ones to watch, bro. I think it was because I was never that kind of player. Yes. So it was like seeing him do those things felt like. Like, I've never done those or even thought I'm going to go ahead that. and address the elephant in the room. Justin's hoop mixtape, Ball is Life <laughs> mix. Bottom Let's tier. Let's go ahead and play a couple clips. <laughs> Top five most boring shit I've ever seen. <laughs> this man, bro, shooting floaters off the glass. 
fundamentally sound, <laughs> pivot, 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 lay. Oh my gosh. I'm like, this guy's going to kill you with fundamentals. It was very impressive, but God, there was no dunking. <laughs> there was one dunk at the end of the, the, end of the whole damn uh, mixtape. And I'm like, this guy here, bro, what the hell? Hey, is man, going you got, at times you got to know yourself as yeah. a part of running your race. And yeah, for sure. And the thing is, too, and another elephant in the room Justin's homeschool team was awful. <laughs> they were awful. He was the only guy on the team and he loved it. He loved it <laughs> because he could shoot every, every time. single time he caught the ball. Every time. But they played in every big tournament. Come on. Y'all played in every big tournament. Hey, like, shout out all my old teammates, man. For sure. Y'all know y'all were yes. perfect in y'all's roles. Yes. Remember that. Y'all knew how to pass Justin the ball. <laughs> That's what y'all all knew how to do. Y'all have one other player on your team. My my junior year, we were solid. We had uh, Don Rad Knowles who went to U of H. He was like 6'10". Okay. Yeah, yeah, I had one. So he was he was solid. Yeah. I had a couple other guys who went like D2, but yeah, we were. Yeah, so we all know what school you went to, uh, North Carolina, University of North Carolina. How did it happen? How did it go down? Man, so I started going to UNC camps back when I was in like story. fifth grade. Yeah, this one's always a UNC guy. See if always. you can find a pick. Always there, man. Got a pick with Coach um, Uh So yeah, so I... I mean, we went to those camps. We would travel from Texas. Um, and we, I don't know why, but the way they did it was they would do like day campers who would go and do the camp all day. And then their parent, they'd go and be with their parents and be with them in the hotel room, whatever. And you did that? I did that. You were the home, you're At homeschooling, homeschool. right? Homeschool. Well, I wouldn't guess anything else, my boy. I mean, hey. <laughs> so, bro, we did that for like five years. Yeah. Um, and then it was actually, it was like my eighth grade year going into ninth grade year when coach Rob mm -hmm. was in my gym and, uh, shout out coach Rob, man. Shout out coach Rob, man. Y'all, Hey, you almost did it. Yeah. <laughs> almost did it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we started talking, um, like I would call him probably once, once or twice a month. Um, and you know, North Carolina, they take their time recruiting. Oh yeah. At least coach Williams and yes. their coaching staff took forever to you know offer somebody so kind of grew that relationship until i was i guess what junior year sophomore year going into mm -hmm. junior year um and i mean i i think i committed like a day or two after just because i didn't want it to be me on the phone after they offered me saying yeah i'm coming yeah. so um so yeah so that's how it started bro i started in these little high school gyms in north carolina and then so pretty much when carolina offered you were going yeah, it was pretty much set. <laughs> it was pretty much set. Now I can say it. Like at yeah. the time, you know how you are in recruiting. Yeah, like you have to like yeah, try yeah. to seem like you're keeping it open. For sure. It was over with. Yeah, like it was. Yeah. Once I heard that they, once they said they were offering me, it was. Yeah. All right, I'll be all there. right. Forty four. For sure. For sure. Yeah. That's tough, bro. To get your dream school and they offer Crazy. you. That's. It's a great feeling. Crazy. It's a great feeling. Yeah. So, uh, Justin, you are top ten player in your class become a McDonald's All-American. Talk about that. How'd that feel? That was dope, bro. Uh, Always a dream. It's crazy, man, because, like, the older you get, you realize how much all that little stuff doesn't really matter. But, like, yeah. going through high school, it's, like, rankings. It's the biggest thing. Big camps. Yeah, like, yeah. McDonald's, Jordan Brand. It's, like, bro, that's all I want. Like, yes. if I don't get anything else in I basketball, I want that. Yes, bro. You know? Oh um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was the same for you, but it was, like, man, when you see your name, pop up on that it's like whew, let's go i'm elite you know i should go to the league right exactly <laughs> like can i go can i just make that jump yeah. just to go straight to the because i'm gonna make donald's all america exactly what am i doing uh, i need to go to college yeah right i don't need that <laughs> meanwhile i'm six eight 150 yeah um yeah, soaking wet yeah uh <laughs> but no that was that was super dope bro nah, bro it was it was i mean it was a good feeling i remember uh I knew you and Joel committed, and then I remember uh, when I committed to, we made like a group chat or whatever. <laughs> bro, we were so corny. We bro. had no idea who who each other like. <laughs> we didn't know each other. At we all. hadn't interacted at all. At all, bro. <laughs> and we just start talking like we were best friends, and like, bro, I can't wait to get to college, bro. <laughs> and I remember 
Uh, we we we'll go ahead and jump the cops, bro, because Aaron, that's the elephant in the room anyway. Go ahead and talk about it. We all get to Carolina, bro. We all move in. All our dumb ass is looking crazy. <laughs> we wearing lanyards bro. with our kids. Hey, bro, we were the biggest nerds. Corn balls, bro. You could... We had we had our lanyards on with our key on it. My, I had a Carolina lanyard, like I'm the cool guy. <laughs> we were full decked out yeah. in the jumpsuits that they give us right off rep. Like bro, we 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 over here trying to get in the gym. We're like, <laughs> yeah, let's get some shots up, bro. Show we working. We went in the gym before camp one time and like <laughs> got on a shoot machine. We shot like 67% as a group. We took a picture of it, posted it. Oh my God, I remember that. We were so booty. <laughs> Oh God, it's so embarrassing. It really is thinking it. back on it. But listen, but at bro, the moment, we know you're no like, better. We bro, you're like, no, we no made better, it, bro. Like this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be doing, bro. I'm gonna send. I'm a. I'm gonna send. Huh, I'm gonna send you a picture, bro. I got a picture of us three in front of our class. We look so stupid. <laughs> we look so stupid, and this, this is gonna be the tale of just us freshman year, bro. We and we like we gonna play, bro. We gonna play. Do all the, we was off season. We was doing well, <laughs> Bruh, The worst part, we didn't play and pick up there. No, never played at all. Freshmen did not play, bro. They always bumped us off the court. Unless it was we, like the last the game, last when everybody else was game and pick up is the only time we played, and everybody was tired. We full of energy. <laughs> we going hard, <laughs> and everybody just did not care. And I'm just like, this sucks. <laughs> This is trash. It was terrible, bro. It was trash. Terrible. But once we got to Carolina, bro, it was it was definitely an exciting feeling. But we always talk about it, bro. What was the welcome to Carolina moment for you? Like, I always say it was conditioning, bro. But no one, everybody should know. Speaking of Justin what? runs like a gazelle. <laughs> so he didn't care about any type of conditioning. We'll come back to the conditioning in a second. Yes. I've, oh yeah. God. I got I some stories on Theo. Um <laughs> uh so yeah my so my welcome i always say this bro and i freaking talk about this to this day was actually in pickup i don't know why i don't remember what it was bro but for some reason i was playing and i was on the opposite scene opposite team of jp mm -hmm. and bro if they had a if they had like a section in the rafters for like pickup players like jp would be in the blue hall of fame like, so when I, when he, I mean, it was like, we would play to seven and he'd have like five of them, like yeah. tough buckets, tough like bucks. spin, cross, step back three, like, and I'm actually playing decent defense. Yeah. And there was one time, bro, I walked off the court, bro. And I was like, I was demoralized. Yeah. Like, bro, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. I'm zoning out just having bad <laughs> flashbacks over my damn self. Oh my God. It was like, bro, I can't do like this is this is my own teammate, and he's not even like yeah. at the time he wasn't even considered like first team all ACC yeah. or and I'm like, bro, I, I don't I don't think I can do it. And I it's and crazy. I remember it was like, I think it was Marcus or somebody was like, bro, just keep your head in it. Like once practices start, like we'll be fine. But I was like, dude, this is that was my like yeah. All right, I gotta tighten up. Gotta tighten up. You gotta tighten up. Gotta tighten up. Yeah. I mean, listen. Condition was mine. Go ahead and tell your story, bro. <laughs> Go ahead and tell your story. Yo, so it was our, was that our freshman year? Yeah, yeah it was our, it was, it was our freshman year. <laughs> and uh, Coach Williams gave everybody else off um, of what they call a 12 minute run. Um, what was I thinking? And, <laughs> <laughs> but the freshman had to run it. So it was me, Theo, and Joel. Stillman. And Stillman. Because he wasn't right. there. Yeah. Ah, that's right. Yeah. So we get up to the line, and the 12-minute run is you basically have to get as many laps as you can in 12 minutes. And I want to say the goal at that time was like six and a half. Like, you had to get that or else you had to come back and run it. Uh, so we get up to that starting line on the track. We're standing there and like, all right, who's going to lead? <laughs> and, and Theo, Theo steps up. He's like, I got us. Let's go. So we're standing there. We didn't know anything about, like. We didn't know nothing. We didn't know it. So we were like, all right, we, we're going to follow Theo. I'm trying to be a leader. <laughs> so we take off. Theo's, Theo's in first, like, probably the first lap. Yeah. 
And all of a sudden, he starts getting a little bit further back, a little bit further back. And me and Joel are kind of up there at the front. And uh, fast forward basically to the last minute. And we're coming around on the last lap. I think it was like number, maybe like number seven or eight for me and Joel. Yeah. <laughs> at the time, we didn't know it because we were like, we were dying ourselves Justin and, too. Justin and Joel were damn near beside each other. <laughs> No, you was ahead of Joel by like... By a little bit. By a little bit. A little bit. But he was right there. He was right there. And so we didn't know it at the time because we were just trying to finish. Like, we were dying too. So we get up there, we finish, and we look back. Bro, that silverback <laughs> was on my ass. Oh, my God. We look back, and if... Like, he was moving slower than you would walk, <laughs> like, through the mall. Like, it was like... And I mean, there was no air under his feet. Like his feet bro, were just scooting across the track. I might like, as well damn near been ice skating. Bro, that was the funniest thing. Everybody was on the sideline because they were all watching us. Everybody was on the sideline dying, laughing. Uh, so yeah, that right there, that- So stupid. That showed me that conditioning was never going to be your strength. No. But, but, but there was one thing I whooped Justin ass in. Oh, man. And that was heels. That was heels, bro. bro. Heels? Oh, <laughs> I dominated. <laughs> That was my kryptonite, bro. Now I dominate because I run like a dumbass. <laughs> I, I'm a forward lean guy. So as I'm running up hill, I'm trucking. Oh, I was, I was straight on the hills. Yeah. I used to kill Justin on bro, the hills. Hills were the worst. But other than that, everything else, <laughs> I used to get smacked. <laughs> but oh my God, it was crazy, bro. Oh, and then there was one other condition story. Um, do you remember the day we had to do the ladder? I knew you were about to say oh, that, bro. When it went all the way to 77. Bruh. So we got a ladder in Carolina with Coach Williams is you have to, is a down and back in 11 seconds is one. Mm -hmm. Down and back twice is a 22. Down and back three times is a 33, 44, 50, as, as you get it. As you go up all the way up to 77. We were in trouble for some. Coach Williams was like, listen, somebody has to run it. I don't care who runs it, but one person has to run it. We was like, all right, bet. We, we counting on Justin on, <laughs> on 66 <laughs> and 77. We counting on Justin on one of them for sure. Justin decides to do 66. I'm like, oh, hell. We don't know who going to, and first of all, the ladder, you had to come back you down. You had to come back down. You had to come back down. So I'm like, oh, damn. Everybody's looking across because Justin just ran a 66. He kills it. And we had a 77. And it's Nate, me, Joel. Joel, like, I ain't running it. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, like, I ain't running it, bruh. Uh, Justin goes off. Oh Justin's my like, gosh, bro. Hey, man, <laughs> I just ran and said, 66. Somebody else got to step up. I ain't running both. I said, damn, I got to take one for the team. <laughs> I got to take one for the team. I'm going to step up. I see nobody on the line. I see this dumbass dude, Nate. Coach, like, all right, he blow the whistle. We're going to get Nate on here. I'm going to cuss you the hell out on the pod. <laughs> We go get, I got on the line and I take off on accident. Nate ass takes off too. <laughs> I didn't have to run. I was so hot, bro. I, once I saw Nate, there was no chance I was making. I was, so, bro, I didn't make it at all. But Nate made it. Coach was like, fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Nate made it. We knew Theo wasn't going to make it. And we just moved on. Oh my God. I was so mad, bro. Bro, I, yeah. That was, that was the funniest day. It could, no, one more story. Do you remember Kennedy? We coach folded that <laughs> towel. Put him on the towel and told him to sit down. Kennedy got us in trouble, <laughs> bruh. Kennedy got us in trouble and made Kennedy, he folded, he said, Kennedy, bring your ass over here. Folded up a towel, laid it down on the court. And he made Kennedy go sit down on the towel and watch us run, bruh. <laughs> I've never been so hot in my life, but it was funny as hell. But, oh, my God, some good times, bro. Some good, memorable times. Great times, oh bro. Oh, my God. What up, everybody? This is your bud, Theo Pizza here with Run Your Race. Listen, I already know wedding season is just around the corner, and I know flights, cars, 
hotels, all that stuff is very expensive. But there is one thing that does not have to be expensive, and that is your wedding attire. They have dinner jackets, shirts, tuxedos, all that for a very, very affordable price. Listen, I got my own shirt from Indochino, custom shirt, wore to the mass ball, got many, many compliments on it. It was very comfortable, but make sure y'all go online and get it yourself. Every suit is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail. They are always adding new pieces and options so you can change it up. RSVP knowing you've got the perfect look all wedding season long from Indochino. Go to Indochino.com and use the promo code RUN to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code RUN. But as far as the basketball aspect, talk about your welcome to college moment on the court. As far as in a game when you was like, okay, this is another level. Um, I think it would have been my, it, it would have been obviously freshman year, but it was against Virginia at home mm. with, I guess, Joe Harris would have been there. Malcolm was there. Justin Anderson was there. Mm. Uh, and then who's their bigs? I guess Gil would have been there. They had Gil, they had, uh, they had one other, they had a dude big. that won ACC. Defensive player of the year. I forgot his name. I can't remember though. what his name was. Yeah. Um, it was nice, though. Bro but Hogden. that team was actually really good. <laughs> nice. um, Mike Toby. I think he was there. I think Toby was, was there. And then there was, was, was that our junior year when Wilkins was there? Isaiah Wilkins? Yeah. Can't remember. But anyways, we were, we were playing, obviously, at Dean Dome. It was rocking. And I want to say it was like a fast break or something like that. And I get the ball and I go up and obviously, like he said with my, my hoop mixtape, I'm not a high flyer. So I'm not somebody who like will get it and just dunk it right away. I got to be wide open and dunk it. Yeah. So I get it and I go up and I, I, I like I see somebody behind, like I, I look back for a second, I see somebody behind me, but I'm like, all right, I got to get this thing up on the, on the glass mm -hmm. quick. So I go up and I lay it up. Find the clip. Justin Anderson <laughs> goes up and blocks it like – it was like street ball volume two. Mm -hmm. How you could block it and bring it down with you. He blocked it so hard that I like for a second, it, he didn't even touch me, but mm. for a second, like I couldn't think. I was like, <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. Like, do I foul him? Do yes. I try to get back on deep? Like, yes. So that was, that was it. The way he blocked it. And I think he yelled when he did it. Uh -huh. And He's it flustered me so crazy. I was like, bro, coach, take me out. Like, yeah. I, I should have told coach just, hey, yeah. I, I need, need one. one. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was it. It's tough. But let's think about this one. Would you say, and this is just me, because I, as everybody knows, I hope everybody knows, I played with Justin for three years. <laughs> of course they know. No, I, I don't know. You know, some <laughs> other guy, my newborn might be watching or something. <laughs> But would you say your breakout game, and it doesn't matter how long it took, it, ACC tournament in Greensboro <laughs> against Virginia. Against Virginia. Oh, play the clip. 100%. My boy Justin was balling. <laughs> balling. Bro. Hey, listen. It was so crazy. It was so crazy. I knew it. As soon as that game happened, I said, oh, he about to take off. Yeah, there's a clip out there. <laughs> I hugged him. I said, Justin, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm like, Justin, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> bro, he was balling, bro. It was crazy. And that tournament was so lit. Oh, my gosh. We came up short. We, we lost, lost another game. game. Oh, my God. We was balling. We were cooking, we was bro. Balling. Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was my best game all year. Mind you, I shot like 29% from three yeah. all season. And I hit like maybe four threes that game. And I swear in my mind after that game, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm leaving. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, psh, that's the only film they need to see. Yeah. Not the 30 other games yeah, that were played yeah, before yeah. that. I'm uh, out. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'll holler at y'all. I appreciate y'all, though. But it was against Virginia, who was great defensive Great defense. Team. Yeah. So it's like, hey, yo, if he can do it against, against these them? guys. Yes, he could do it in the league. I might have scored like seven points the next yep. game against Notre Dame. So yep. it was like, all right, well, I'm coming back. Um, 
But yeah, that was. I you thought went, that was going to be my break. went nuclear on that one. Yeah, that you was went good nuclear. One. Then we go to the tournament, come up short against Wisconsin. We come back. Do you remember what we did when we got back from uh, L.A.? What did we do, bro? You remember we knew everybody was coming back, and we watched film of the game as that soon as we right. got back to campus? God, oh, we did, God. didn't we? Bro, we sat in the locker room. For like hours, and everybody was coming back, and we watched the whole Wisconsin game. The whole game, game bro. I was like, "What are we doing?" Yeah, it was like two and a half hours, bro. bro. It was the longest film ever, and I was just like, "This, this is crazy." But it was always a method to his madness, I guess. I don't know. I guess we come back. We have larger roles on the team. Sophomore year. Have a decent year again. Yeah. You have a better than freshman better year. Better than freshman better year. Better than freshman year. And we make a run. We get hot. We beat Duke in Duke. Yeah. That was talk about talk about a breakout. <sighs> Bryce Johnson. <sighs> Jesus. People, it's funny, man. People like the problem with North Carolina fans is they're very like, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. But, you know, you see. Obviously, shout out to Mondo and everything he's doing, all the records he's breaking and history that he's making. Yep. But you see a lot of arguments about you know him being you know, top five or whatever when it comes to bigs, bro. And I sit there and I'm like, bro, what we watched Bryce do our sophomore year was absolutely insane. It was, it was nuts. It was nuts. It was one of the biggest. It was like one of the most switch flicks. Most impressive switch flicks I've ever seen in my life. Crazy. It was unbelievable. That man had 39 and 20, what? Four? Yeah, 25. like 24. I'm like, what the Who yeah. does that? And then he took off. Yeah, ever since that, from, from I didn't that, know who he was anymore. Bro. It, it was like, because it went from, everybody jokes about it, bro, but it went from him like not doing nothing. Nothing. Like you couldn't get him to do any extra work. The only thing he had was a big ass head. That's it. <laughs> That's it. His his, it, his hat size said to be decided. Yes, it, you got it. It. you didn't know either, either day it was either gonna be, uh, <laughs> bro. Oh my god, bro! But what he did our sophomore year was one of the most impressive things I ever seen. Crazy! Bro. It like, was nuts. It was unreal. The only time he didn't have a crazy game was when we just didn't pass him the ball. Yeah, yeah. We lost at we lost at home because we didn't pass. Him That's the ball. it. Because he was cooking. And he still had twenty and twelve. He was still cooking, bro. And it was crazy to think too, bro. Regardless of, we all know how that year ended, and I was just, oh god, the hell was Bryce doing? <laughs> that man was trying to guard the net. Lord have mercy, play the clip. <laughs> but it was tough, bro. But I would say one of the most fun months of my life, bro. By far, one of the most fun months of my life. We beat Duke at Duke. We go to the ACC tournament, beat the hell out of Notre Dame. Who else we played? Then we played Pitt with Cam. No, we played Pitt, then Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Because Notre Dame beat us early in the year, and we owed them. Exactly. Then the Virginia game was turned because we was in D.C., so Virginia was right down the street, and our fans travel. Then we beat them. We went to the ACC tournament. Then we play in Raleigh. Oh, my God, bro. Those games were unreal, bro. Nuts. Crazy. Nuts. Oh, my God. Then we make the tournament. I mean, make it to, to the Final Four, and we just – I remember we was at the Final Four, and every other team was so uptight. Didn't bro, we, and we was out there having a blast. We looked like we didn't – like, well, we, we weren't taking nothing serious. Bro, we were just like, we're going to go out there and hoop, do what we do. We felt – I honestly felt – we never talked about it, but I felt like we weren't beatable. I, f- yeah. I didn't think anybody could beat us. I didn't either. Especially the way we was playing, the team we had. We were deep, bro. Like, we were deep. Our second five was as good as our first, like, not our first five. Like, y'all was nice as hell. But, like, as far as, like, our second five was better than a lot of teams' first five. 100%. And that's what's crazy about it, that we had so many ways we could play that it made, it made us a very dangerous team. But after we had lost that game, what – what went into you that summer? Because you, you, you were a totally different player. 
you are totally different. You're my, not a different player, but your mindset and your focus yeah. at that summer, I knew you was going to have a big, big year. Like you were locked in, but everybody, I mean, everybody yeah, was everybody just knowing was. what happened yeah. uh, the year before losing off a game winner, but you were on a different level. What, what, what went into that summer, uh, your junior year? Yeah. I mean, so it was, it was like the same situation. Cause you know, they had just started the whole where you could like enter your name into the draft, but you had a certain amount of time to pull mm -hmm. out or whatever. Um, so like I, my sophomore year, it was basically kind of the same, like, information that we got back was like I had to shoot the ball more consistently and still I just had to get stronger you know yeah. what I'm saying like that's that's basically what everybody was saying it was like the same stuff that was said in my freshman year so in my mind I was like and it was like you're you're maybe into the first round maybe on that on that the cusp the cusp of it and so in my mind it was like then why would I chance that and why would I not just go back and work mm. and I think a lot of times bro like I think I felt like I was doing, I had so many more things like our freshman and sophomore year. I had honestly now thinking back on it, I had so many more things that I was thinking about. Like it was like, man, I got to get to the league. Mm. Or it was like, man, HG, HD all halftime. All he talked about was like set screens for Marcus. And yeah, it's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it was like, there were so many more things that was like going through my head of like what I needed to do or what needed to be different and all this stuff. And I finally was just like, all right, you know what? Screw it. Like, I'm just going to go, even when I feel like I'm tired, I'm going to go back to the gym at night and get shots up. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like we, we always took a certain amount of time off and then lifts would be optional. Um, and pretty much, honestly, pretty much the whole team got in there when the lifts started to become optional. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was locked Especially in. after that year. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like, I, I took like, I mean, we took, I took like maybe a week off and it was yeah. like maybe maybe the week before it became optional. But like I was in the weight room like ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, so I think it was just like my head was more clear and it was like, okay, I need, I know I, what I need to do for myself to get to where I want to be. But also it was like, bro, we just were right there. And we, we knew, obviously we lost Bryce and Marcus who were two unbelievable players. But I was like, bro, we got, Joel now stepping into kind of that bigger role. We got you stepping onto into that that wing position now. Like we've got mm -hmm. just enough to make it back. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So it was like it was just being able to have that and being like, okay, you know what? Like we're gonna just put work in all summer yeah. long. It was, bro. I'm. It's so crazy just hearing you talk about it as far as that journey. Like I can't wait to get everybody on at the same time just to talk about each other's thought process throughout that whole year, that junior year, bro, our junior year, because I'm just thinking of like, we were so connected and we were so locked in, like even the little shit that we didn't, we didn't even think about at the time, but meant so much. Yes. Like we would be like, all right, if we going out tonight, we going out together, we all making sure everybody get home. We Excellent. all making sure the next day of practice, we all going to bullshit at the same time so we can just have a good practice right. or not even, not even, not even BS. We all, we know if we go out, we're going to have to lock in and practice right. the next day. Or if we, if it wasn't like nobody going out before the game, mm -hmm. the next day, it was like, okay, do we have a day before the next game? Okay. We got a day before where you can recover, do what you got to do. Then we'll go out and do what we got to do. Even the fact, what was the uh, pizza place? Uh, you talking about the one that just was put on Franklin Street? It was uh, with the had the personal pieces that we used to. Oh, you talking about Old Chicago? We went to Old Chicago, bro. And I'm and I'm I just thought of that, bro. We went to Old Chicago. You you Justin and uh you uh Kenny you and Kenny Luke. and Luke went all the time, and then next thing you know, it trickled down to Facts. me, Joel going, then Kennedy, Isaiah stepping in. Facts. Like it was like we were so unified and together. We didn't even realize that was that made a, the encore stuff Facts. so much easier. Facts. Like we were so locked in with everything, bro. We were a unit. We knew what we had to do, and we just handled business, bro. Like from start to finish. I had got hurt. That helped Kenny with his confidence Facts. getting in and just going, being himself, playing well. He held it down while I was out, and then Joel took off. You took off, bro. You was playing at an unbelievable rate and you 
end up winning ACC Player of the Year that year. Um, it was crazy, bro. We we were really we was really locked in after we lost that thing, and we weren't even in a locker room. Bro, that's what I was literally just thinking about. I just saw a video not too long ago of us being in that that closet of a locker room. Find a picture of the Way locker room in uh, the Smith Center. We was in that all summer. All summer, bro. And you wouldn't have known that we gave a damn. No. We was in there grinding, and we would come back in there. We had a little jukebox in there <laughs> playing music, <laughs> dancing, having a good time, bro. Like. We were so locked in, bro. It, it 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 is unbelievable to think about, and it's just it's it's crazy, bro. It like is. we 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 were we got a new locker room that year. It was dope. Yeah. I uh, I want you to talk about um just the the one game that I knew you were gone, and you don't even know I I knew you were gone. I knew you was like on a different level mentally and physically and your competitiveness like you were always competitive but we played at camp we played in the smith center mm -hmm. we were playing duke and the acc in uh the acc play of the year was between you and luke Kennard. and you came to me the scout we did a scout report before the game uh whatever and they came to me you had like matt jones yeah. or something and I had Luke. And he was like, Theo, no. <laughs> <laughs> didn't tell the coaches, didn't tell nobody but me. He said, Theo, no. I got Luke. You got whoever the hell else. I said, nah, bruh. It's my matchup, B. <laughs> he said, hell no. Nah. I got Luke. I said, okay. <laughs> you got it. You got Luke. He wanted that funk, bro. You wanted the funk. You knew that was a game to decide it. Basically. You knew it was the game to decide yeah, it, bro. Yeah, And I could tell you was so locked in, bro. You was ready to go. You, it didn't care what was up. You was winning that game. Bro, it was, what's crazy is that was actually, I played offensively. I was awful. Horrible. Awful. Like, I, I could not throw it in the ocean. Like, it was just like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. But it was like, in my mind. It's a big shot late, though. Facts. It's a Dude. big shot late. But in my mind, it was like, if we win this and we end up being, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. better than Duke, yes. then it's like, you got it. You got to give it to whoever's yeah, yeah. on the whoever, better team. Whoever on the better know? team. Um, and so, you know what's crazy, man, is like, that year, going back to what you were saying about us being so close, that year, bro, like we had, we honestly had a lot of things not go our way and we that still, season. Oh my God. And, but you would never know it when it came to like how we were connected off the court, how we were on the court when we would get on the court. Like, bro, I'd never forget, bro. I still feel terrible, bro. When we, when you broke your foot, yeah, when we were on that what army base or we whatever, were on army base, and we were we were playing, and I think like we were going for a ball or something, and I like ran in front of you, and that's like whenever you had to like try to stop yourself, and that's mm. whenever you felt in your foot. Mm. And, uh, bro, I felt terrible because mm. I was like, bro, I just, I just made this guy break his foot. I didn't know that. Like, yeah. bro, I, I literally, like, to this day, bro, I, like, <laughs> think about that. And I'm like, dang, bro, like, I really, yeah. I really did that. Yeah. But it was like, you had that. That shit was inedible anyway. It would have <laughs> happened at some point, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got some weak feet. Yeah, apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shout out Jordan 11s. Yeah. Um, Facts. But then it was like. So then you were coming back from that. Then Kenny went down in, into his lunging stretch and that couldn't was, come back. That up. was the wildest shit I ever seen. That was crazy. That was the wildest like shit. Like now we can laugh about it, but. Yeah. But you remember even, even that year we played in Maui. Dominated. Yeah. Beat the doo-doo out of everybody. That is true. Killed everybody. Then went to Indiana. Got <laughs> smacked. <laughs> oh my smacked. gosh. They smacked that us. That is, Yeah. Got yeah. smacked. But it was like that happened, then we came back and it was like we just kept going like nothing ever happened. Like nothing you know happened. what I'm saying? Like yeah. and it yeah. does go back to like, I mean, the the amount of times that I was the DD, because I was boring, maybe it was I was homeschooled or whatever, but I was a little boring in college. Mm -hmm. But I was always the DD. Always. Right? So it was like it'd be two o'clock, three o'clock, 
I get a phone call. Be like, yeah, I'll be right there. Come pick y'all up in the Yoda. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Drop everybody off. And Shout it was out like the Yoda, man. That got us a lot of places. <sighs> got us a lot of places in right. college, man. Made a lot of things happen. For sure. Uh, but it was like just little things like that that people never would know or never would see. And didn't need to know, but it was just like kept us connected. And it just, and then we go to Bredman's. Shout out Bredman's. Shout out, shout out Bredman's. We go to Bredman's the next day, talk Golly, about the light, Talk about it. Cover. Those were some of my best times, and I wasn't even, I wasn't even there. Yes, but it was like but hearing the stories. Hearing the stories, hearing the stories bro. seeing everybody laugh and bro, joke. One time at Bredman's, I fell asleep at the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lie. He was definitely knocked out for at least 10 out minutes. I was at the table, bro. I was so, I was hungover as hell. But, bro, it was just some good ass times. Just bro. great times, time. bro. Go and talk. Let's go ahead and get into it. Talk the, the run. The run we made that year, bro. Did you feel pressure uh, when we got to the tournament? I did a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit, just from the standpoint of like we were well, we were number one seed. Yeah. And it was like everybody's been talking about redemption, redemption, redemption. Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, if we go out here and we lose, that storyline is done. Duh. You know? Um, but the at the Arkansas same time, game, though. <sighs> uh, that was the only game where I was like, bro, it might be over with for us. I don't right. know if there was any other time in the tournament that I felt even the Kentucky game, like the whole game, I didn't feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. we were going to lose it. You know what I'm saying? But it was like that Arkansas game, when you look up and we're down eight points with whatever it was, it was like. I'm going to be honest with you, bro, to this day, I don't know how we did it. I don't either. I have no idea how we did it. Shout out to those referees, too, during that game. Yeah. Especially towards the end of the game. For sure. And hey, Kennedy made this unbelievable tip in with the left. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Then who we play after that? We played Butler. Butler than Kentucky. Smacked up on Butler. You and, you and Joel went stupid against them. Yeah, Joel was. Y'all went crazy. Like that. Then that Kentucky game, bro. Oh, my God. When you talk about lit back and forth. Like, we didn't even realize who was in, like, at the time. Think we about knew, who was in that game, bro. You had Fox. You had Monk, Malik. You had Bam. You had me. You had you. Joel Kennedy, bro. It was that. High-level basketball, bro. Isaiah Briscoe, who was a problem. Max. I mean, and then the damn rise of Luke May. I mean, what yeah, got into him? I mean, we saw that all pra- oh, like yeah. all season in practice, though. But what made him decide? <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, I don't know. What made him decide right there? Oh, yeah, this sit right this here. This is it. This, this is my sit time. right here. Yeah, dog. this is when we do it. I'm like, can't thank him enough you, for it. What were you thinking? Because play the clip. Everybody's seen it. Play the clip. That whole, I don't know how many, first of all, I know what you was thinking. Why the hell you missed the free throw? <laughs> I was just that, about to what, say. I, that's what I'm thinking. Damn, <laughs> Justin, make a free throw, bruh. Oh, my God. Justin was a lights-out three-point shooter that year and then could not make him free throw to save his life. So they miss. I'm backpedaling. I'm like, oh, hell. What's happening now? If you look very closely at the clip, play the clip, slow it down. I get back screen. I already got burned on it one time. I actually, like, and they hit us with it again. That bam back screens, man. It's supposed to be a skip to uh to De'Aaron in the corner again. But your guard Malik, he flies off. He shoots so out of control three. Crazy. What's going through your head at this? Bro, I thought, because I made him double, double pump. I'm like, there's no way he makes that. I was like, bro, this was the best defense you could play in this situation. Yes. And, and joined, Luke contested too. It was two people contesting him. And he made it, and I was like. It went back to the free throws. I was like, in my mind, I was like, I just lost us this game. Just smoked it. All I had to do was make one. I, I just thank God I blacked out. <laughs> That's all I say. I thank God I blacked out. Wasn't thinking. But actually, no, no, no. This is, thank God I blacked out. I was selfish. Yeah. Because when I saw it, it went in. I said, oh, damn. And all I thought was like, get the ball. I, I just went like this. Didn't know he's really gonna throw me the ball. Threw the ball. I'm looking at the clock. I'm thinking, go score. <laughs> Be the hero, go get a bucket. Bro, I go down court. I'm dribbling, dribbling. I got Fox on me. I'm like, oh damn. Fox fast as hell. He cut me off. <laughs> then I see somebody loading. I do a pitch back. Luke's sitting there wide open. Then 
Luke hits the shot. I look back at the replay. I'm driving left. Justin got his damn hands up like I'm going to see him. I'm like, what is he doing? And was Justin open. does the funniest celebration I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> when Luke makes his shot, he puts his hands up in the air like this. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I was in that moment. I was like, he just saved me. He just saved us. But what am I supposed to do? Oh, my God. It was 0.7 seconds left. Like yeah. It was like. It was unbelievable feeling, bro. And then we got back. Once we saw we was back, oh, it yeah. wasn't nothing stopped. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't nothing stopped. I was, I was so determined. I was like, it don't care what we got to do to win this national championship game. We just got to win it. Yeah. Like, we, we leaving with a dub. No matter who show. goes off, For who show. plays well, Listen, we're just winning we it. We just finding a way to win this game. Yeah. That, that was a great, great feeling. Yeah. And then we knew you was gone. <laughs> I knew it. I'm like, just find me a OJ agent at this point. <laughs> but uh, so you get to the, you don't get, talk about the draft process. You know you're leaving. Talk about the draft process for you. How many workouts you did? So I did 11. 11 workouts. Because my, my range was supposed to be like 11 to like 21, 22, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we basically did workouts for all those teams that were in that range. Um, which was that whole, the whole workout process, nobody's listening to me, but it's pointless. Um, except for some guys that just randomly show that they're completely different players. Yeah. Um, but went through that, bro, got invited to the, the green room and that whole experience was super dope, but the longest night ever. <laughs> it was like, bro, this, can we just hurry this up? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it was, honestly, I was, I probably could have gone earlier than what I went, but actually Malik had dropped a few more spots than what everybody thought mm -hmm. he was going to be. And so. You had no idea where you were going. Had about. no idea. Really? No idea. Like I knew the Spurs really liked me at that time, um, but they, their pick was like 19. Mm. Um, and yeah, and it was one of those things where it was like, you just got to sit there and wait. And all of a sudden my agent got a phone call and then looked at me and said, hey, the Kings are going to draft you at 15. So it was like, mm. all right, let's, let's do it let's then. Let's do it, bro. That's an unbelievable feeling, man. I remember I saw it. I was so hyped. <laughs> I was so hyped. But then I was pissed. I'm like, sorry, mofo. Right out of the lottery. God, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> What's there when you say, ah? <laughs> Shout out still, man. Still water. But uh, so you get drafted to the Kings, you get the sack. What was your welcome to NBA moment, man? What was it? You went stupid against Steph. That and what's crazy is that was probably my welcome to the NBA moment was guarding KD. Like, you know, you you have all these moments in your life when you like can literally it's as if you're still sitting there in that moment yeah there was a time it was a simple play he did like a one dribble pull up mm -hmm. but he drove in with his left and picked it up and as he picked it up i jumped because mm -hmm. i was like i mean i'm out of the play i gotta just try to make a play I, contest. I got to my peak and he was still, still going up. above it yeah there's no blocking and it was like i don't even know if it touched rim yeah and i like i ran back down the court and i was like what I do? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do with that? So I think you can't do. that was it. Now, obviously, he's Hall of Famer, arguably best scorer that's ever played in the game. But yeah. that was yeah, that was it. Now, would you say that was your best game? Yeah, to this day, that was that's my career high in the league. That's how much was it? Like twenty eight. Twenty eight. You was going dumb. You was going dumb. You was feeling yourself too. I was. You was. I was yelling. Up. Yeah, you was talking shit. Yeah. Then I got I dropped like, by Steph. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to get in front of it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Because people sure. might go back and look at for it sure. and they're going to be like, wait, sure. wasn't that but, him? Hey, you had 28, though. Did y'all win? No, we lost. It was stacked, though. So. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about different experience, though. What happened? Uh, you got traded during a game. Talk about that story. Yeah, bro. Uh, so it was the same one. Everybody probably saw Harrison. He was sitting on the bench. and Yeah. They said he was traded or whatever, mm -hmm. but he was still sitting there. 
So I was on the opposite end of that. Um, and we had just, we had just traded Shump. Uh, like it was like right before my shooting time. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of the guy that was like right in front of me as far as like the rotation and stuff like that. Um, and I love Shump. Shump's one of the dopest teammates I ever had. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it was like, all right, well, I get to, Oop, I get to kind of rock out. So I go through my shooting, my shooting time. We go through warm ups. Um, and I think I was actually going to start. And I'm sitting there before they're like playing the starting lineups thing. And I'm sitting there and, uh, I like, Said my prayer out, like I always say a prayer right before the game, but I say my prayer, I come up and Dave Yeager, who was our head coach at the time, is like sitting right next to me. And he leans over and he's like, hey man, um, you were just a part of a trade. We're going to have to get you off the court. And I like, I laugh. I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, no, like I'm serious. Like you got to be off the court because the trade just happened. <laughs> and I was like, you're about to start. Bro. Like, and that was the first time me getting traded. And so it was, bro, it felt like my world was over. Like yeah. I was like, like, mind you, I'm just getting traded and get to still play in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, bro, like for a year and a half, like Sacramento was all we knew. Like, mm-hmm. obviously I was married to Brooks, to, like, you know, for that year and a half. And it was like, all we knew. It was like, we had gotten our friends. We were in the process of getting a nonprofit started out there. Like, yeah. And, bro, I sprinted to the locker room, bro. And when I tell you I broke down like I had never broken down to that point, yeah. like, it was like, dude, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like, called Brooke. We both started crying on the phone. Got, uh, got showered, got dressed, whatever. Talked to, it was Vlade at the time mm-hmm. uh, and Peja. Talked to both of them. And, of course, they're like, oh, it's not the end of the world. You'll be fine. It might even be a better situation for you over there and i'm sitting there like bro what are you talking about yeah, bro. like this is the worst moment in my basketball <laughs> career what do you mean for human beings bro and, and so go home um uh, get there with brooke a couple uh a couple of the assistants that i was close with in sacramento one of them he was like my assistant coach uh he like came over to the house after the game basically like you know sad i was leaving whatever I had phone calls with all the guys that were here with the Mavs. Um, and then, yeah, it's like I woke up the next morning and Christy, who's still here with the Mavs, yeah. um, hit me up saying she had a, she either had a flight for me at like 10 or I could get on a flight at 2. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Like, yeah. mind you, it's like probably 7, 30, 8 o'clock Sacramento time. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, dude, I just woke up. Yeah. Like, hold on. So you're telling me I got to get on a flight today yeah. to get out of here. And uh, so, yeah, freaking got, I obviously chose a later flight, got on a flight, came out to Dallas, and that was the end of that whole saga. Wow. What a hell of a story, bro. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. About to start. Shit. About to start and get traded instead. That's a blow. Yeah, not gonna lie. Low blow. Got but got through it. Got through it. Uh, before we go, I want you to talk about just last year, bro. You were in the NBA Finals. I was like, like it doesn't matter what you were doing. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. What was that experience like, bro? You know what is so funny, um, Justin. Let's address the elephant in the room, brother. My dumb ass. You got a ring, bro. You have an NBA championship. Mm-hmm. Talk about that run. How was that? Um, it was wild because uh, we started out, was it the first series? No, we, we beat Miami in the first series. Uh, the Brooklyn series. Oh, yeah. Katie, big ass foot. But even before that point, bro, the first two games we played at Brooklyn. Oh, y'all got smacked. 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 I'm talking about smacked so bad. Like, obviously, I was still with the Bucks. I was full on Bucks. Yeah. We got smacked so bad, bro. I had my car sent back to Dallas. I was like, bro, the way they just dismantled us. Yeah. 
There's no way. I was like, dude, this is crazy. Yeah. Then injuries happened. Yep. Sometimes you got to get a little lucky. You got to get lucky. KD's foot was just a little bit too big. Yep. And uh, yeah, then we just kind of ran through, ran through and then got to the finals and had a tough, we lost the first two games to Phoenix. Um, but then we bounced back and beat them both in Milwaukee. And then it was like, after we beat them both those games, it was like, yeah. we're about to win it. We're about to go take this. Yeah. Because once you, you just got to figure it out. That's it. You and that was, figure it out. that was a thing too. Like being with the Bucks, it was, it was super dope seeing, obviously we've played for a ton of different coaches, mm-hmm. but the way they did it was like, all right, we're going to see this first game, kind of what they do. Mm-hmm. And then once we see that, then we're going to make our adjustment. Yeah. And so it was like, all right, nobody was like, oh, it's over with after Freaking the first out. game. Yeah. It was like, all right, this is what we need to change. This is what, you know, we need to take advantage of. And then. Boom. And that's what people don't understand about the playoffs. It's no. very strategic. It's very. Very You can't strategic. show all your cards off mm-hmm. rip. Like, you got to play the way you've been playing, maybe add a few things here and there. But, yeah, it was, uh, but it was super dope, bro. And the, the parade. That was the wildest thing ever. Like, really? The whole city shut down. Mm-hmm. I want to say there was like 600,000 people like on the whole route that we were on on the yeah. bus. Like, I mean, it was people everywhere, bro. And, you know, obviously I didn't, I mean, I played at the end of maybe four or five games for like yeah. a minute or two. So yeah. I didn't play a lot. Sometimes I wasn't even active. Yeah. But it was still having that feeling of like, for sure. You're man, champ, we bro. just made it. Yeah. You You're know what champ. I'm saying? Like yeah. we just did what, Literally every Everybody basketball dreams. player had dreams of. ever dream of. Yeah. So that's dope, bro. You got a championship at every level. That's dope. I'm, I'm striving to do. <laughs> really am. But the biggest accomplishment and the biggest thing me and you have right now is one being a girl dad. <sighs> yeah. Listen, bro. Talk about that. And we're going to end on this. Talk about being a girl dad, bro, how special it is and how <sighs> it's hard for me to put into words, honestly. It really is because it's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Have that little girl just stare at you and be like, <laughs> we're really like their role model already. Yeah. So it's kind of just, it's crazy. So you talk about it in your. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, so my little one is 17 months. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's for one, it's crazy just to see the different stages of them developing. Sure. It, it starts off where it's literally like everything that they need, you have to you do, for do them. Yep. Like there's there's no other choice. Mm-hmm. Um, then it gets to where they can kind of move around a little bit, maybe play a little bit on their own. Now, I mean, she's freaking basically running. Yeah, and like getting into stuff and asking me for stuff. Like it's like it's the wildest thing, but. I think the biggest thing is like, and we've talked about it before, they don't care if we're an NBA player, if we uh, pick up trash on the side of the road, Mm -hmm. if we're working at wherever, like Mm -hmm. they could care less. Like, I mean, I I start this season off being with Boston and when I got traded, I was like, dang, I got traded again. All those emotions come home to the apartment I walk in the door and she runs up to me and it's like, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, she could care less if I was Jason Tatum on the Celtics or if I just got traded and waved or whatever, like Mm -hmm. she just wants her dad, Yep. you know? And it's like, it's the best moment and the best job or whatever you want to consider it. Like basketball to me is so much more below being her dad and Mm -hmm. being hopefully what she strives to marry one day or to be or whatever. Like, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's wild. Now it's hard. No, for sure. We all know it's hard for sure, but it's the best thing I think we've ever done. That's dope, bro. That is dope. Um, it's a great point. though. it really is. Uh, just, they don't care. They don't. They just want to see you. They just want you to hold them. That's it. Play with them. Feed them yogurt. Feed them. Yep. That's it. And watch TV. Yeah. Well, people, that's another unbelievable episode of Run Your Race with my boy. Very, very special guest, Justin Jackson. I appreciate you coming on, brother. Uh, it's been dope. We definitely going to do another one with the whole Nat- National mm-hmm. Championship group, which is going to be unbelievable. 
I thank you for coming on. It's been great. Um, and you all already know what to do. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Tell your mama, tell your grandma, tell your daddy, your uncle, everybody, your cousin. And uh, y'all keep tuning in, man. Like I said, we only getting bigger and better. And um, it's been dope. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, man. AJ, you're getting another fire. Bro. Peace.